The teleport service lets you teleport players between places and games. If you just want to teleport players within the same place, skip to the timestamp that I'll put on the screen and in the description. This diagram tells you where you can and cannot teleport. There's a difference between places and games. All games have at least one place, and if a game shows up in your creations, it is its own individual game. You can teleport between any of these creations, and you can also teleport to other people's games as long as it's public. Whenever you teleport to a different game, you teleport to the starting place. This is the place ID that you see in the URL. You can teleport to any place within a game and you can teleport to the starting place of another game, but you can't teleport directly from one game to anything other than the starting place of another game. To add a new place to your game, go to View, click Asset Manager, right click Place and add a new place. Once you do that, you can double click the place to open it. Now we have our new place. I added a green brick just so we can differentiate the two. Now let's finally get into the functions and talk about how you teleport a player when they touch this brick. We do this just how you get any other service, game colon, get service, teleport service. We have the place ID right here and then the function right here to teleport the player. That's all you need to do to te teleport a player. Everything else is just for the touched event and a debounce. So the teleport function takes a place ID and then a player that you want to teleport. All of these teleport functions also have optional teleport data and loading screen arguments but I'll be talking about these in a future video on customizing teleports. These just allow you to make a custom loading screen for the teleport and to transmit extra data that is not required to be secure. If you don't know how this touched event works, be sure to check out my video on touched events, but basically we're just getting whatever part touches our brick, making sure that it is actually a player right here, and then getting the player from the character that touched the part, and then since once we have that player, we can teleport that player to the place that corresponds with this place ID. As I said before, you can get the place ID from the URL, or if you've added a place with the asset manager, you can right click the place, copy the ID to the clipboard, and then paste it in. Another quick note is that you can actually get the current game's place ID by printing game.placeID. Now if we go to test this out, you'll notice that we actually cannot teleport while in Roblox Studio. You need to publish your game and then play your game in order to test it. Be sure to publish all of the places in your game, not just the starting place. Now I'll start the game online, and now that it's started up, I'll walk over to the brick. It'll take one second or so, and then I'll be teleported to my next place. Another important thing to note is that if you want to teleport to games that you don't own, you'll need to go to Game Settings, go to Security, and then Allow Third-Party Teleports. Now you do need to be careful with this because if you insert free models, they could contain scripts that force players to teleport to games that you don't own, but if you're careful about that, then this could be a beneficial thing to add to your game. If you want to teleport a group of players, then you'll need to use the teleport party async function. Teleport party async takes a place ID just as before, and it also takes a table of players. So in this case, I'm just getting all of the players in the game, but you could use whatever combination of players you want, as long as you're giving it a table of players right here. There are a few differences, but don't worry, it isn't as complicated as it looks. This right here is the only part that is really teleporting the players. The rest is just making sure that it worked. As you can see, we're using this pcall function, and this function returns two values, success and result. pcall is used to make a protected call. This just means that if the function we're giving it right here, if this function results in an error, the code will continue to run. What we're doing is passing pcall a function, and this function just calls teleport party async and returns whatever value teleport party async returns. So as I said before, pcall returns two values. The first one is success and the second one is result. So if our function that we gave it is successful and it does not result in an error, then success will be true and result will be whatever our function returned, which will be whatever teleport party async returned, which will be a job ID. If this all fails, then success will be false. So that's why right here we're saying if it's not successful, then we're going to give a warning message with the result. But as I said before, if it is successful, then result will be whatever teleport party async returned, which is a job ID, and that is a unique identifier for the game server instance running. You can see that shown on screen now, while all these players may be in the same place in game, they're in unique servers, so all of these servers have unique job IDs. If you want to teleport players to a private server, it's actually fairly simple. You'll need to use the reserve server function here. In this case, I'm passing it game.placeID just to show that you can use this inside of the script as well. So this would just create a private server 
of the game or the place that's currently running that they're currently in and it returns a code. This code is then used in the teleport to private server function here. This takes a place ID. So again, it's just the game.place ID in this case, the code that we just got when we reserved a server and teleport to private server takes a table of players. So if you wanna teleport an individual player, you'll actually need to create a table. So that's why I have these curly braces around player because I just wanna create a private server for one individual player. Later on, if you actually save this code though, you could later on teleport a player to the same private server as long as you use this code again. Every time you get a new code, you reserve a server, you'll get a new code and then you could use that for a new private server. If you reuse the same code, then you'll be teleporting players to the same server. The code at the bottom here can just be used to determine which type of server is running. You can get this code at this link right here. I'll leave that in the description. I've added these two spawns to my place because you can actually teleport players to individual spawns by name. The red one is named red spawn. The green one is named green spawn. Back in my other place, I have this code right here. This is all you need to do to teleport a player to an individual spawn. We have teleport service, teleport to spawn by name, has a place ID, the name of the spawn, and then the player you want to teleport. If you want to teleport to the red spawn, we just put red spawn right here and the player will be teleported to that red spawn. The last functions to talk about are get player place instance async and teleport to place instance. The code I'm showing you is available on the developer hub. I'll leave a link in the description. So these are useful if you want to teleport a player who's joining a friend to the correct place within your game. Without this, if you go in a game, teleport to a place other than the starting place, and then a friend tries to join you in that game, they will actually join the starting place and they won't see you because you've teleported to a different place. So this code allows you to check to see when a player joins a game. So we're using the player added event. Uh, we're checking to see if that player is following anyone. So in this case, if follow user ID is anything but zero, then that player is following someone. So follow, I, follow user ID will be the user ID of the player that player is following. So if this is not zero, then the code in here will execute. So all of this will execute. And we're using pcall again. And this time code inside of that is get player place instance async. This takes that follow ID, that user ID of the player that player is following. And it returns a tuple with these items inside. So it's a current instance. This is would be an error, but we're throwing it away. The place ID and then the job ID. So the place ID of the player um, that this player is following and then the job ID. So that's the specific server instance that that player is in. And um, if this is successful, then we're going to teleport the player to the place ID and to that specific server, that job ID, and we're teleporting player, this player that's just been added. Now I'm going to talk about one event. I'll talk about teleport and it failed. This event fires when any one of those functions that we talked about fails. So let's just teleport, teleport party async, teleport to private server and so on. This will fire when any of those fails. So what this code right here is doing is we're creating a function that will just retry the teleport if it fails. So at the top, we're just creating a connection and we're connecting to the teleport and it failed. And then this function right here will be called every time it fails. So first we create that connection and then we try to teleport. So this will either work or if it fails, this event will be fired and our function will be called. So we'll check to see if the player that failed the teleport is our local player because this is in a local script. And then we'll check to see the results to see if it's appropriate to retry. And then we're going to disconnect from our connection to the teleport and it failed. And then we're going to wait five seconds and then reattempt to teleport. Because this is a local script, we don't have to pass the player. We just need to pass the place ID. If you're instead of wondering how to teleport a player within a game, you can check out this article that I'll link in the description. I'll briefly walk you through it. All you need to do is set the C frame of a character's part. Uh, it could be any part of them. Here they're using the humanoid root part. If you set the position, it'll kill them. But if you set the C frame of a character to whatever you want, then that will move them properly or teleport them properly. So here they're just typing game.workspace.player 
In your case, you'll want to either find the player with wait for child, or you can do game.workspace, whatever the character's name is. That human over part, that C frame equals whatever C frame position you want. You could also set this to equal to something such as part.c frame, where part is in whatever location you want to teleport the player to. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video if it helped you out, comment any questions below, and subscribe for more in the future.